Hey, what's up guys? Tugi here, back again with another episode of my Vegas Golden Knights franchise mode series right here on NHL 19. To kick things off, let's talk about a couple of things. First off, Ben Martin, go full rebuilding hockey town mode. Alex Vreeland, go full tryhard and win the cup. Luke ES, trade Eklund, trade the old guard. Andrew Kaufman, we need to go full rebuilding Hockey Town. Uh, trade Suzuki, trade Roach, trade Flash, trade Suzuki. Uh, Aliza, I read the whole thing. I promise you, I read the whole thing, and Reitz is not going anywhere at the moment. I promise you. Charles, in terms of the draft being a little bit too easy, perhaps. It also does depend on the overall of your scouts. That's a big thing. Uh, V. Jose, why do I need so much trade bait? Why not? V. Jose, how can you say it's poor skating when the info is inaccurate? For the same reason as I can say it's poor anything else. V. Jose, yeah, but you don't need to pin everyone. Yes, yes I do. And there were some other things as well. Grim Reaper mentioning that, you know, it's okay to have a top four D-man on the third pairing. Yule Wave, kind of a similar thing as far as not worrying about the morale. And Stormblaze, why do I care so much about skating? Because it's an attribute and it's important. That said, let's get down to the business of today's episode first. Things first, Fog of War is going back on because we need to visit trading away a couple of players who really aren't worth keeping around. That said, are they the players that you think they're going to be? No. No, they're not. Because we're going to try to do something silly to start this season. That being, keeping this team together. Is it going to work? Probably not. Will we inevitably have to trade some people? Probably. But this team is going to start with Marvin Mason on the top line. Now, these overalls have changed slightly with Fog of War back on. We know Mason's a 90, Glass is an 87, stuff like that. So I have this sort of the way I want it. But Mason, Glass, and Klassen will be the top line. Dwyer, Goldobin, Lackey, Fotino, Suzuki, Roach, Verbata, Fedorov, and Datsuk. Defensively, Theodore Provorov, Rositas, Norton, Bronstrom, and Gertz in the goaltenders, Vasilevsky and Kapinen, with James Neal and Magnus Eklund as your healthy scratches. Like I said, we're going to do something stupid, and we're going to try to keep this team together for as long as possible, which, in fairness, could absolutely be detrimental to the progression of some of our players. And if it starts to prove that that's the case, then we'll make changes at that moment. But for now, let's be dumb about this and try to make this happen. Now, because we are holding on to some of these guys, I am going to get rid of players who are just going to sit otherwise, and we might as well get something for them. We start off with the goaltender Schwartz and the three defensemen, Frazee, Bickle, and Platt as we move some guys out so that we don't, you know, completely hinder the development of some of our AHL prospects, particularly on defense, of course. Now, unfortunately, it's not looking like I'm going to be able to trade everybody to the same team, which is all right, unless Columbus works out, which Schwartz isn't under contract, so it might, and we're just going to look to get back draft picks in return. They don't want to give any up, so I doubt this is going to be of a concern to have that be accepted. Indeed. Let's just see if we can get that St. Louis pick that they don't want to get rid of. And no, we cannot. Surprise, surprise. Let's go second and a fourth. Just a safety net it a little bit. How about just the second? Wow. Okay. Well, uh, maybe their trade values were a little bit over. I know I know what the response is. Obviously, I'm reading what the response is, but still. Uh, damn. Damn, really? I mean, it's just, I know I'm offering you a shitload of defense. What about just a third? I'll take it. Fine by me. Just to get rid of them, we get something back. And as it is, it's not as if we haven't been successful with third round picks. Cough, cough, hint, hint, wink, wink, Tate Dwyer. Uh, we also have two forwards that I would like to get rid of. That being Sanderson and Quincy. Those are the two. That are going to be on the way out, and let's see where we can send them. Minnesota should work. Now, here's the thing. If we end up... Man, I might be able to get more back for this. If we end up having to trade away some of our top-notch guys anyway, we can just fill out the roster with players from the AHL. I'm not too concerned 
So doing this, or with players from the AHL, with players from the free agent list, so I'm not all that concerned. Uh, we'll try to get a second and two-thirds. Doubt it goes through, but it's worth a shot. How about a second and a third? That works. That works. So there we go. A couple of guys shipped off of the roster just for the fact that we don't have space. We probably wouldn't have space for those guys even if we kind of kept the roster as was or as it was. So defensively, we do have uh, the fourth line made up of defensemen. And Tyler Wong's in there as well. I'm actually going to keep it that way for now. I'm cool with it. I don't necessarily care about the uh, about the players that are in, even if they are defensemen. Uh, we'll run with seven and eight forwards, actually, because Nilstorp is a forward. I mean, granted, Tyler Wong is ours, but there you go. Well, we're going to keep the team the same for now. Like I said, before we get into trading everybody, <laughs> let's just see what happens here. What is... The worst that could happen. As I just wanted to double check this, that it is good to go. And that appears to be the case. Sweet. So let's get into simming the season with this completely ridiculous and just downright stupid setup. As we have way too much top end talent. So it's either going to go one of two ways. Either we are going to steamroll absolutely everybody, especially after the addition of Provorov, or uh, we're going to struggle. Now, that said, with like Nick Suzuki on the third line, I'm not going to be sitting here and being like, Nick Suzuki should have 60 points. Like, no, we're going to keep the... We're going to keep the same kind of guideline of a third line guy having, you know, 30 points minimum is a solid option. Again, 40 to 50, closer to 60 for a first line guy. Y you know, you know what I expect at this point, even though some people are like, man, you're expecting 20 points from a fourth liner? That's ridiculous, which I disagree. That's a guideline. That's a goal. It's a goal. It's not the end all be all, though it certainly helps. But that said, let's get down to business here, shall we? And we'll sim... This first season, we're going to lose our first game. I'm sure of it. Yeah, 4-3 in overtime. <laughs> Not surprising. Now, oh, wow. Mason out already. Not for long. And uh, that'll get James Neal onto the top line. The real deal. Back in Vegas and on the top line. As a three-game point streak to begin the season comes to a close. But paying attention to morale here is going to be key and whether or not certain guys are developing as they should. Let's get Mason back into the lineup. I'm intrigued to see here. I mean, it is super early. Four goals already for Klaassen. Third line's doing all right. Interesting. Interesting. I mean, we are only five games into it, though, so can't be too judgmental on any of the stats that we're seeing now. It's just a wait-and-see kind of deal. Central scouting, what's up, even though we're not going to have anything uh, really known. Timofey Puninoff's the top guy. Derek Lehman's up there. And Tyson Wakabayashi from Switzerland. Because everyone, that's the most common surname in Switzerland, Wakabayashi. Didn't you know that? It's common knowledge, man. Uh, Tutu and Datsu. No, I'm good. I'm good. I should probably edit out the trade block because, again, if we're going to make any trades, I'm certainly going to be the one to initialize them. As Dirksen goes down, our backup goaltender for the Chicago Wolves, which is all right. Four, four, and one. Not exactly a flying start. And I was intrigued to see if that would be the case. And honestly, I'm not surprised. Six, five, and one through the first month. Let's take a look at the lines, see what we could potentially change up before we pull the trigger on making moves. So like I said, I'm not against sacrificing the first half of a season, just to test things out. So in terms of goalies, let's see, Vassie's only doing okay, Kapainen's been terrible in limited appearances. Four points for Theodore, nine points for Perovarov, Rosidas and Norton are doing alright. Second pairing's been okay, but no major point getters outside of probably Provorov. Mason, Glass, and Klassen are all looking pretty damn good. As far as the second line is concerned, six points for Dwyer. That's okay. Six for Goldobin, seven for Lackey. Five points for Fotinus. I'm actually surprised that we're losing. Because we do have players that are putting up points. Jesus, Fedorov has five goals. I'm actually surprised that we're losing ever so slightly. Uh, how are we doing morale-wise, fellas? Everybody good? 
everyone's good. People are on board. They want this to work. I'm telling you. So Havla did as the backup goalie. The AHL team actually had a half decent record too, which is hilarious given the <laughs> given the line combos right now. But we'll stick with it. I mean, Vancouver's ten and one. I'd like to compete with that ideally because I'm sure on paper I have a better team than they do. But you know, it's it's okay. It's okay. We still have plenty of time to just sit here and screw around and see just how stupid good this team could be or how disappointingly bad they could be. Regardless, we're still in control. We're still right where we want to be in terms of having the players to make moves, having the prospects to be able to make these moves. So I'm feeling good. 6-3-2 and two Chicago. If they finish with a winning record, I'm going to laugh because I was very tempted to just go out and sign a half-decent free agent. Uh, as we get an offer for Justin Falk and Landeskog. Yeah, don't think they're going to fit the team, game. Just, just a hunch. Just a hunch. As we'll sit here and clear out the trade block to avoid this problem over the next couple of months, couple of weeks at the very least. Let's see what else we're dealing with here, shall we, as we beat Anaheim. Hell of a win streak to begin this month. An 8 to nothing win over Minnesota. As this offense is starting to find their groove, Dirksen is back for the AHL. He'll step in for Hovlid yet again. How are we doing potential or uh, morale-wise here? I expected Dylan Dubé to be pissed. He's actually not, which is great. Tynan's feel everyone's feeling good. Look at this. Everyone's on board with the stupid decision to keep everyone on this team. People like championships, man. We're the Golden State Warriors of hockey, except we haven't won a goddamn thing yet. But give it time. Trust the process. Philadelphia. Born and raised. 4-5, four, or 14-5-1, one, now 14-6-1. Ooh, 7-1 loss. I'm going to blame Kapinen for that, even if he wasn't in. It'd be nice, of course, if I could just click and see the stats for that game, like you can in, like, MLB or whatever with a box score. But what are you going to do? Madden as well. That said... Overall, despite a couple of losses, two losses in our last five games, we have one game left this month, it has been a successful stretch of games. So we play the Florida Panthers with a losing record. And for that reason, nope, we got the win. 5-2. Sweet. So 18-7-1 to begin the season with the stupidly bloated roster. We're two points ahead of Edmonton, who are at 16-7-3 because this division is still just stupid good. Clausen has 37 points, 19 goals in 26 games. <laughs> oh my god, he's a cheat code. Marvin Mason, my, man, man, 33 points in 23 games, I'm loving it. Cody Glass, I mean, 32 points in 26 games, I'll take it. And then Russell Clausen's just a beast. On the second line, Tate Dwyer with 23 points in 26 games, amazing. Goldobin with 26 points in 26 games. Lackey has 25 points already. Fotinos, not bad, at 13 points. Hilarious for Nick Suzuki. Roach with 14. Ten, uh, nine points there. Ten goals already for, for, uh, for Fedorov. Jesus. And Kirill Datsuk. I have no complaints. Defensively, Provorov has 20 points. Monster. Rosidas and Norton, not exactly point getters. Eric Bronstrom, oh my god. Still just putting up points like a madman. Uh, and really, it's just the fact that Vasilevsky hasn't been killing it. He's been doing very, very well. But he hasn't exactly been killing it. Is Eklund pissed about sitting? He doesn't even care. He's, he's fine with it. Everyone's on board. Because as long as we're steamrolling teams, for the most part, nobody cares. Nobody cares. That's all we need to do. Just keep winning. Uh, I'm going to go best lines there and see if it changes anything. And it did not. Okay, cool. Just wanted to double check to see if it would change up uh, our setup with those defensemen on the fourth line. So we are good to continue onward yet again. Silly season continues. Well, let's go another month. Let's end 2024 oh, with a bang. Can we beat Detroit? We can't. We <laughs> begin December 2024 on a rough start. A 7-4 to four loss. Again, I'm going to slightly blame the goaltending there. Back-to-back -back losses. Is silly season over? Is this decent run of form due to come to a close? We lose three out of four. Granted, we get two pity points, but still lose three out of four. And now three out of five. And make that uh, four out of six to start the month. 
29-3. and three. Still worth keeping an eye on this. Chicago still doing well. Barely over 500. So we lose to Dallas. So win-loss hockey. Not what we were hoping for. We haven't stringed together wins all month. Can we change that here against Edmonton? Yes, we can. Make that three in a row. And we're looking that much better. 25-10-3 on the season with two games left in this calendar year. An 8 to nothing win over the Coyotes. And against Anaheim, it is... Drum roll, please. It is... Taking forever. Dominic Verbata is hurt. We'll have James Neal step in for the next week or so. It's a 4-3 win. So there you go. 27-10-3 as of January 1st. We are currently in second. Only five points back of Vancouver. Although they have a game at hand. We are seven points clear of Edmonton with a game at hand. As Russell Clausen has 61 points in 40 games. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh my God. He is on pace for one of the best seasons we've ever had of any forward in any series. My God. Mason, 53 points in 37 games. <laughs> he has as many goals already this year as he did last year. That He's already passed last year's point total. Oh my God. This is insane. Cody Glass has 53 points in 40 games. Good Lord, man. And Russell Clausen, 34 goals. He hit 40 last year. <laughs> oh my god. That line is a cheat code. That line is a cheat code. You look at Mason's offensive abilities. You look at Glass as a setup man. He's not, not even the best setup man we could have. And then Clausen. People talked about that truly elite sniper. We could have used him. And still could use him in the California Golden Seals run. That's an elite sniper. By every stretch of the imagination. Tate what? <laughs> He's a second liner. He has 39 points in 40 games. What is this team right now? Victor Goldobin's point a game. This is insanity. Elijah Lackey has 21 goals already. Our top six is so disgusting. <laughs> it's so disgusting. Fotinos has only 16 points, but I can forgive him. He has 11 goals. My God. Nick Suzuki with 19 points. Again, that's, that's good. I'll take that. And Gregory Roach with 18. That's good. I'll take that. I mean, we're playing second-line talent as third-liners. You know, like I said, I'm going to readjust what I'm hoping for here. And then on the fourth line, James Neal, of course, hasn't played much. Fedorov has 13 goals. Oh, my God. Datsuk on 11 points. How was Verbata doing? 14 points. Not bad at all. Defensively, Shea Theodore, 15 points and a plus 19. 28 points for Prover off and a plus 21. Only 4 points for Rositas, but he's a plus 21. As is Norton, who has 11 points. Bronstrom, 21 assists and a plus 4. 6 points for Gertz, and this is, this is dumb. <laughs> this is so dumb. <laughs> and we can afford it too, that's the worst part. <sighs> it's all going to come crashing down. Like, hey, here's the thing, right? Look, I know, this isn't sustainable, obviously. I'm not saying it's going to last forever, but we do have an escape plan. It's called getting rid of whoever the hell we want to get rid of because we have amazing choices regardless. But for now, we can sit here and have the stupidity go on for at least the majority of this season. When we look at those who have expiring contracts, it's quite obvious this isn't going to last. Gertsen, Hatainen, Kane, who I'm not as worried about, but is looking like he might end up being pretty good. And then obviously, Klaassen, Mason, Lackey, Goldobin all have contracts coming up. The beneficial thing is that they're RFAs. So money-wise, if I can't deal certain players at the draft, we have room to, you know, get rid of these guys. But these four, I plan on keeping, right? Like, I'm not going to get rid of those four. There's no way. We'd be getting rid of Cody Glass. We'd be getting rid of probably Roach, Nick Suzuki, and even they aren't making that much. Not to mention, uh, we have James Neal on one of those $20 million contracts. We're set. We're set. The, the personnel as it is won't be able to stay. But for now, they can. <laughs> you know, long. this isn't our long-term plan. Obviously, this isn't sustainable. But for now, while it is... We're kind of reaping the rewards. That said, we have had teams perform at an even higher level, which brings to the you know brings me to the point and the topic of discussion of whether or not it's worth keeping this team as is 
for the playoffs. We could, but in terms of that proper team balance, it's really not there. <laughs> we have too many players. I mean, again, we have uh, players on the third line who are all capable of putting up amazing points. I mean, Fotinos is already a great sniper. Nick Suzuki is an offensive dynamo, as is Gregory Roach, although to a lesser extent in terms of playmaking ability, ever so slightly, than Nick Suzuki. So, I mean, again, long-term plan, bam, that's our top six. Maybe not Fotinos in that spot, but that's our top six. That third line eventually goes. And you can't tell me, in a way, that between frickin' Victor Goldobin or Tate Dwyer, whoever we wanted as the playmaker, that they couldn't put up points next to Mason and Claussen. I could put up points next to Mason and Claussen, and thanks to knee injuries, I have the skating ability of a newborn draft. I could put up points, even if I had the David Clarks in it and just put myself in front of the net and tip in pucks or take a puck to the throat, one or the other, anybody could do it. It's points made easy. Now, I still don't like how we're not destroying every team 17 to nothing every game, but that's probably an unrealistic expectation. It's not even an expectation. It's a hope. It's a desire. So yeah, not to mention Chicago's still fucking killing it. Oh my god. <laughs> With three defensemen listed as forwards, player morale. Oh boy, here we go, our first bit of controversy. We got a couple of them. Klaassen, I'm glad you're taking my obvious talents into account. Ah, oh, Russell, I will... I will bow at your feet and do nothing else. Oh god. Oh boy, what do we? how do we want to answer this? Um, keep up the hard work, Russell. Keep it going. Yeah, damn right, Russell. Me and you. Forever. Victor Goldobin, I'm happy. You should be, Victor. There's a lot to be proud of, Victor. You're damn right, me and Victor. I don't like the... Yeah, Eklund, I get your ice time. I do. I do. I'll consider making changes. That's a lie. I'm not going to make any changes. He's going to sit there in case of injury. <laughs> and down in the AHL, everyone's good to go. Beautiful. It's a beautiful day. When you can keep a super team like this together, that still might fall through in the playoffs. <laughs> because that's just my luck, but that's alright. For now, I'm enjoying it. We may stop the episode at the deadline. Maybe, possibly, potentially. Wow, Vancouver. Jesus. Whew, any other division in the league, I think we'd be in first. As a matter of fact, we're going to check that. 72 points, the Canucks on 77. Are we, we have to be the top two teams in the league, right? We have to be. It can't even, it can't even be close. Yep, we are. In fairness, Tampa's kind of close, but we are the top two teams in the league right now. We are averaging four goals a game. <laughs> oh my god, this offense is disgusting. 207 goals on the season. Next highest is 186. Good lord. Claussen's on 74 points. I am the happiest boy right now. <laughs> this is amazing. Uh, player morale. What do we got with this old player meeting here? Russell, what's up, buddy? Oh, you have... Yeah, we... Our team is performing well. It is. Things seem to be going very nicely for us. Let's do it. Yeah, we're good. Let's let's rest on our laurels right now. Why not? Or rest on our Yannis. That works, too. Alright, let's take a look at the team again. Because why the hell not? We know Russell Claussen's an absolute beast. Marvin Mason... Good lord. 63 points in 48 games. Oh my god. Cody Glass has 16 goals as well. 65 points in 51 games. <clears throat> and then Russell Claussen. Jesus. <clears throat> 74 points in 51 games. One goal shy of hitting 40 again. Tate Dwyer. Killing it. 51 points in 51 games. <laughs> Oh, I love it so much. Victor Goldobin, 52 points. He had 55 last year. And Elijah Lackey, 50 points in 51 games. To the third line, Fotinos has 20 points. I just want him to hit 30. He should do that. No problem. On the third line center spot, Nick Suzuki has 22 points. I just want him to hit 30. He'll hit that. No problem. Gregory Roach, 26 points. He'll hit 30. No problem. And on the fourth line, 14 for Verbata. The goal is 20. He will he should hit it, no problem. Fedorov has 25 points. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> and Dotsuk with 14. Defensively, Theodore, 19 points. Provorov's a beast and a half. Rositas is doing well. Norton's doing great. Bronstrom's a monster. And Gertsen's doing well. 
The goaltending Kapainen has been miserable. Vasilevsky playing up towards his true potential. So Kapainen, you're gonna watch out, buddy, because there's a guy by the name of Maxime Gervais-Schwenard who is hot on your tail, buddy. Hot on your tail. A lot of pressure you need to deliver. Uh, let's sim towards the deadline. And we'll see what awaits us in terms of record. Matter of fact, we're going to sim right to the day. We'll take a look at everything and see if it's worth changing anything around, who might be underperforming, particularly at the AHL level, if it's worth even calling you know, or signing anybody to kind of fill out spots. We'll take a look. But needless to say, we have choices, much like we did at the start of the year, and I fully expected by this point to have it be like, oh, okay, we're still trading players, and we're in, like, October, and we'll get it going. But, uh, no, no, we have 80s-style offense with this just stupid team, stupid in the greatest way possible, that it's left us with even more options than I think we already had. As Gregory Roach goes down to injury, the real deal will slot in for him for the next week. Like I said, I think it comes down to just making sure that if we wanted to re-sign everybody, we could. And I'm pretty sure that'll be a possibility. As long as we're not... Oh boy, Klaassen's slightly hurt. As long as we're not... I'm just going to play Eklund as a forward. As long as we're not stunting anyone's growth. And the main guy I'm worried about, of course, is Fotinos. As long as we're not damaging any prospects by doing this, which we'll double check in a moment to see if we actually are, then I am okay with this. Uh, did it put Roach back in the... Oh, Roach was healthy. Okay. So, for the moment, let's put Eklund there, and then go back to James Neal, and put Roach back where he belongs, and then swap Eklund. I'm going to leave Eklund there. He was, he's an offensively uh, gifted defenseman, so I'm just going to play him on the top line. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Why not? He's only going to be there for a game or two. So we end up beating the Bruins 4-3 to three in overtime. And we have nearly arrived. We got this game against Tampa. Klaassen is back. I'm a little bit upset that Klaassen got hurt at all. Eklund had a goal in the two games that he played. Because of course he did. Look at who he's playing with. It's ridiculous. As we lose the Tampa 4 to nothing, unfortunately. But 42, 16, and 5 at the deadline. The Chicago Wolves on 34 wins. We are currently at first. We have jumped Vancouver by a point. Kick rocks. Canucks. Let's take a look around the league, shall we? We should be the number one team in the NHL. And we are in terms of goals for. The numbers dropped a bit, but we still are averaging 3.86. The highest number in the league. Goals against is one of the lower, right there at the bottom. So, not bad. Not bad at all. Let's take a look at some points, shall we? Let's do this. Russell Clausen is nearly guaranteed... I mean, he is a guaranteed... Uh, he's one point away from being a point-of-game player minimum. It's it's insane. Mason on 75, Glass on 73. Good lord. Dwyer and Goldobin on 60 lack... Oh my god. So, out of the top six... Everyone has 57 points or over. <laughs> Let's look at Vancouver. Yeah, they, they, no, they don't have that. They have two players over 57 points. Oh my god, this offense is just stupid. Oh my god. Fedorov on the fourth line has as many points as Roach. 20 goals. Suzuki on 26. Fotinos on 23 with 16 goals. Just nuts. James Neal doesn't have a single goal. How many 30-goal scores do we have? We have three already and five 20-goal scores, including a fourth-liner. And then defensively, yeah, Proveroff. Look at the plus-minus on everyone except Bronstrom and Gertsen, who aren't exactly killing it. And then goaltending-wise, yeah, again, Kapainen's been pretty disappointing. It's been pretty disappointing, but that's okay. Let's take a look around the entire league, shall we? As in terms of starters, Vasilevsky has the second highest save percentage just behind Braden Holtby. In terms of points among defensemen, Provorov is third in the league behind Boakfist and Dumba. Go figure, Matt Dumba, that type of point getter, huh? And then for forwards, Kucherov and McDavid are up there, as is Klassen, though. He's in an elite Klassen, you could say. 
It's ridiculous. Oh my god. And then for rookie skaters, Ahmad Kang, Ryder Clark, Grayson Wall, Casey Moan. The Moans. So, in terms of what we can do here, like I said, I'm pretty sure money-wise, we can keep this team together, especially thanks to the wonderful power of negotiation with RFAs. Where if we look at Russell Clausen, Jesus Christ, he wants all the money in the world, but I could lock him up, and he's, I mean, he's worth it, right? Like, he's getting that, for sure. We have $34 million to work with, right? So if I look here, Russell Clausen, we could get him at thirteen seven five, roughly, for eight years. We're going to do that, by far. Uh, that'll leave us, again, with, it's going to cut into it. But to say that we couldn't afford to sign Mason Goldobin Lackey as well, and Gertzen for that matter, we could. Like I said, we just have to get rid of people at the draft. Mason's not even looking for that much. If I were to go eight years for Mason just to get him locked up long term, which might be the best way to do it, 10-5, uh, that's not bad. And if we were to go for the term that he wanted, it would be 7-5, a little bit over 7-5. So we have options there. You have Goldobin, who's only looking for six on an eight-year deal. Oh my god, I don't see why we wouldn't sign him to an eight-year deal. Uh, he'd be looking at 7-5 over eight years. Like, our, that top four is set. That top four is set. And to be honest, money-wise, we might be able to do this without having to get rid of anybody. So Russell Clausen, you know, screw it. Again, eight years... Let's, uh, let's actually add this up, shall we? Let's add this up and see if I could make this happen. Unfortunately, the zero key is uh, botching on my keyboard here. So let's just say 13.8 for, uh, for Russell Clausen, right? Let's say 13.8 for good old Russell. Marvin Mason, if we wanted to sign you for the full eight, again, it was what, 10-something? I don't know, I'm just going to do it over again. 10-6. Uh, 10-6 for Mason, which again, that's for eight years. There's no guarantees that we have to go with the eight-year deal, but it would be kind of nice to just never have to worry about these contracts again. Goldobin. Goldobin would be 7-5, which is freaking grand larceny. <laughs> like, that's such a steal. Uh, Elijah Lackey. Elijah Lackey. Elijah, what are you doing? Oh, what are you doing? How much money do you want? Quite a bit. But even then, let's take a look for the sake of argument. 8.4 for Elijah Lackey. And let's look at Gutzen as well for the hell of it. Where I don't know if we'd want to lock him up long term. Eight years, especially to low elite. How much better is he going to get? But for example, if we did, it would be about 5.6. So... We add all of these wonderful numbers up, and we are looking at 45.9 minimum, right? 45.9. So, you factor in... Uh, you factor in the 4.9 million of one Cody Glass, that brings us to about 40.1 million. You factor in potentially the contract of Shea Theodore. Definitely the contract, I think, of Roach. I think Roach would be on the way out. And, yeah, that's it. Like, Theodore... Eh, not even Theodore. Like, between Theodore and Suzuki. Like, we're good. We can afford all of them. That's it. If you take out Roach, Suzuki, and Cody Glass, we can afford to re-sign everybody. And we still have prospects coming up. Now, that's not to say that it might not still be a good idea to get rid of Bronstrom, to get rid of Shea Theodore as well, just because of some of the other prospects that we have coming up. But to say that, and not to mention, I mean, the $20 million is coming off the books of James Neal, but that's factored into the re-sign space. We could keep this team together. Undisputed. Like, we could keep this team together and just say, screw it, let's go for it, and see what the hell happens. 
Or we can play it safe. Again, Kapainen, I'm worried about as a backup. But there's no real sense in going out and getting a better backup because, I mean, well, your race to Renard is good to go. So we could make that argument already. He's 22, medium elite. Kapainen is 22, medium starter. We can make that argument now. Do we just stick with Kapainen for the rest of the year? Or do we call up Gervais Schwinnard now and just see what he can do, even though he's two overall points weaker? And, of course, we have some really good goaltenders in the system already. Defensively, I mean, Eklund's the one who's really suffering here. But, you know, Theodore might be on the way out. Bronstrom might be on the way out as well. We could do that. Have Provorov, probably Norton, Gerdson, Rositas, Hatainen, Kane. And Bobrovsky's there as well. So it's like, if we wanted to, if we wanted to say, like, no, play it safe now, like Thornton... Uh, Thornton, Bronstrom, and Eklund could go, and we could call up Hatainen, Kane, and Bobrovsky. Like, we're so set. We are so set, which of course we should be. That, that means, in terms of being like, hey, let's be stupid and just, you know, trying to stick with the Vegas core didn't work. So let's, you know, do these crazy trades and make it work, which again, the only reason we had the assets to do those crazy trades is we elected to sell in the first place. It's not like the idea was, oh, let's trade up for all the top picks in that one draft. It just kind of worked out with how rare of an option it is uh, for teams to want to give up those picks. But yeah, I mean, we're set. We're fine. It's just a matter of when do we pull the trigger on getting rid of people. So let me know. Down in the comments below, is now the time or do we wait until the draft? Do we just let this team as is go for it and see what they can do? In terms of anybody whose growth might be slightly stunted, I mean, obviously goaltending-wise, we don't have to worry about it. By the way, Coburn is improving at a pretty rapid rate, which is a good sign. Rafael Reitz as well, taking a step up. Defensively. Norton hasn't really improved that much, but he is playing in his role. Uh, Rositas is the one that I'd be worried about where he hasn't much developed. Bronstrom, that has to be, I mean, that's morale more than anything. Uh, so in the system, Hatainen, someone I'm worried about not developing. Unfortunately, no progress there for him or Kane, but Bobrovsky has been getting better. So that's something to factor in. Maybe we're seeing a little bit of stunted growth among defensemen. And then forward-wise, no improvements from Mason, not as if he needs it. Uh, let's take a look. Nope, I wanted forwards. Thank you. Uh, Fotinos has been improving, despite being in that role. So, I'm feeling good. And then in the system, Hudson Bembridge might be the one guy who's kind of getting the short end of the stick. Rizzi and Steos as well. It's up to you guys, though. We can keep this team the same and just go for it. Or we can take a step back and still be fairly ridiculous, but perhaps not as ridiculous on paper. I will leave it up to you. Let me know down in those beautiful comments below. And as always, make sure to support the video beyond just watching, because that's not good enough for YouTube. That means the subscribing, the liking, the sharing if you want to. I don't give a shit. Don't worry. I can be your secret of, oh, I watched some dude on YouTube play through franchise mode, but I can't explain it to my friends or parents because they'll think I'm weird. Embrace it. Embrace it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.